but it is my pleasure to welcome Mr. Dan Mears, Casey Wolf. Well, before I get started talking, real quick, uh, I'm going to show you a short video, kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what I do for the Chiefs. And uh, keep in mind, they actually pay me to do this. Okay, I'm a mascot. It's kind of funny. When you're a mascot, I've discovered there's three questions that people always ask. So as soon as they find out that's what you do, it's always the same th three questions. Number one, and this is how they say it, is that your real job? And yeah, believe it or not, that's my real job, okay? Number two, isn't it hot in that costume? Yes, it is, okay? If you get close to a mascot, you'll know it's hot in that costume. And uh, I think a lot of you know, mascots, we use a special cologne. Uh, it's called Fur Breeze. You can get that stuff at Walmart, okay? But we go through a lot of those. And then the other question I always get is, how did you get to be a mascot? Well, I think some of you know I got my start in college. I wore a tiger suit at the University of Missouri. Now, I know half of you like me, half of you don't like me right now. But, uh, but if you guys know, I was trimming the tiger and did that for four years. Then I graduated, which made my mom and my dad real happy. Okay, Smart kids graduate magnum cum laude. I graduated thank the laude. So I... Uh, you know, mom and dad are excited. They're like, son, we're proud of you, but you need to get a job. So when I got my first job after college working in professional baseball, I wore a bird suit for the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, if you've ever seen the Cardinals mascot, he's a character called Fred Bird. Um, you, if you look at that picture, you can tell two things. Number one, that was a long time ago. I don't exactly look like that anymore. The other thing you can tell, the guy that was Fred Bird before me was a short guy. You see how pretty tall? That means his feathers covered up a lot more than my feathers covered up in the bird outfit. <laughs> so, so I'm running around St. Louis, look like this. I get a call from the Kansas City Chiefs. They wanted to know if I'd be this guy, KC Wolf. And I thought, you know, I better look a lot better going to work in gray fur than yellow tights each day. So I took the job in Kansas City, and as Sean said, I've been with the Chiefs. This is, I just finished my 29th season with the Chiefs this year. Which, yeah. Thank you. I know you're thinking that's a long time to avoid a real job, and you're right. But, uh, but I love what I do. You know, people always ask me, you know, what's the best thing about being a, a mascot? Well, number one, I get paid that goofy, which is kind of nice. I used to get in trouble for that in school, and I get a paycheck for it. So there's, uh, there's hope for some of you kids out there right there. <laughs> number two, 
I tell people I get to work each day in, in a suit and a tie instead of a suit with a tie, so I don't have to get too dressed up. Uh, number three, I get to meet all the Chiefs players, get to know those guys, which is interesting, and get to know all the Chiefs cheerleaders, too. But I don't, I don't do that in the US much because uh, 25 years ago, this wife got married to a fox, and the fox does not like me hugging cheerleaders. And, uh, I was kind of hoping to bring my wife along. She was busy today, so I brought a picture of her. There she is. <laughs> uh, there she, yeah, I know. That's, that's my trophy wife. That's how we got me an F.O. right there. And, uh, but actually, I got a lot better picture of me and my family right there. And, uh, well, that's, uh, we don't use steroids in the NFL, that's all natural right there. Actually, actually, I got a better picture of my family right there. I got my wife, we got three great kids. My two oldest are in college. My youngest daughter, she's a senior in high school this year. And I love being a dad. All three of my kids got to bring me in for show and tell back in kindergarten. Kind of fun. I even, I even got to trick or treat with my kids about what, 10 or 12 years ago. And of course, I went as the wolf, my kids were the three little pigs that year. So I had a good time. But, uh, but you know, I, I once read that if you ask a man his occupation, all you're going to do is you're going to find out how he pays his bills, right? But if you ask a man his preoccupation, then you will discover the passion of his life. Now, my occupation's mascot. I pay my bills running around in this costume here, okay? But my preoccupation, I tell people what I am truly passionate about in this life is simply three things. That is my faith, my family, and using my life to make a positive impact in this world that I live in. You know, in the back of my Bible, I've got this quote, and it, it says this. It says, God did not put us on this earth to make a living. He put us here to make an impact. And I believe that, that, you know, we're called as men to be difference makers in our world, in our, in our homes, our workplaces, our churches, this world that we live in. And, you know, I get the opportunity to do quite a bit of speaking around the country, do a lot of speaking on leadership. And I tell you, one of my favorite quotes, it's from a guy named John Maxwell, who once said this, he said that leadership is not about titles, positions, or flow charts. Leadership's about one life influencing another. And honestly, that's what I'm passionate about, is encouraging others, especially men, to live life of influence. And, you know, as I was thinking today about what I wanted to share, I thought about this quote. And you guys, this quote is on my desk at Arrowhead Stadium, and it says this. It says, your life is like a coin. You can spend it any way you wish, but you are only going to get to spend it one time, so spend it wisely. And, you know, I love that quote because that quote reminds me every day I get to make choices, right? Every day I get to choose how I'm going to live my life. You know, I'm the one that's going to decide how I'm going to spend my coin today. And, you know, the older I get, and I am getting older, I hate to admit that, I'm as old as Sean. Yeah, it tells you how old I am. You know, we're both taking central servers at this point, okay? You know, we're both invited to that special club, AARP, got that letter in the mail, I, I just turned 50 a couple years ago. I got my first colonoscopy, even. So, uh, and yeah, I did. <laughs> Give me something to look forward to getting older. But, uh, but I think that's more than you wanted to know about the work this morning, you know. But, uh, but you know, you guys, the older I get, the more I realize that how you choose to spend your coin each day is very important because those choices you make every day, big ones and even the small choices, you know what, those add up over time. And at the end of your life, when you look back at your life story, that's who you are, it's who you've become, it's the impact and influence you've had with your life, it's going to be determined by those choices you've made along the way. You know, and I remember when my kids were back in elementary school, there used to be this poster at the school. Whenever I'd see the poster, it always reminded me that even those, those small choices I make each day really are important because here's what that poster said. It said, guard your thoughts, they become your words. Guard your words, they become your actions. Guard your actions, they become your habits. Guard your habits, they become your character. Guard your character because it becomes your destiny. You know, those choices you make, 
Every day are what determines our character and our destiny. You know, I was telling you when I speak to young people, your, your destiny is not determined by chance, okay? We know that. Our, your destiny is determined by choice. Those choices you make every day are what's writing your life story. And when you think about it, every one of us here today, we're all writing a life story. And every day is just one more sentence. And I once read that since you're the author of your story, ultimately God's the author of our stories, right? but we're kind of co-authors in this deal. But since you're one of the co-authors, you get to decide each day whether that sentence you write is going to end with a period, a question mark, or an exclamation point. And, you know, I always try to teach my kids, do your best to live each day so that it ends with an exclamation point. And, you know, in the short time that we have together this morning, I'm going to share with you just a little bit of my life story. They asked me to share a little bit of my story. And if I was going to be honest, I would tell you that the chapter I'm going to share with you of my story, in many ways, has been my least favorite chapter because it has been the most difficult, and I'll tell you, it has been by far the most painful chapter. But the reason I want to share it is because in other ways, I, I look at this as one of the great chapters of my story because through this chapter, God has taught me some incredibly valuable life lessons. But, but the chapter I'm going to share begins November the 23rd of 2013. I tell people that I will always remember that day, because on that day, I literally came within inches of losing my life. Now, thankfully, instead of losing my life, I spent nine days in the hospital, and I got some big scars. And I had a guy tell me once, scars are just tattoos that come with a really cool story, right? So today I'm not going to show you my scars. If I do that, I will never get invited back to Colonial Prisons, trust me. So not going to show up my scars, but I do want to share just uh, briefly my story. But the question I have been asked just hundreds and hundreds of times over this past, what, a little over five years is what happened. You know, how did you get hurt? And as some of you guys know, um, the best way to answer that is by telling you that the uh, KC Wolf here got to go for his very first bungee jump, and we'll just say things did not work out very well. Okay, you see, I'm not only an NFL mascot, I'm also a failed bungee jump survivor, and there's not a lot of guys that get to say that right there. That's kind of a small niche I've created for myself at this point in my life. <laughs> But today, uh, like I said, I want to share with you my story. But most importantly, I want to share with you the greatest lessons that God has taught me. But November the 23rd, 2013 was a Saturday. I woke up bright and early that morning, drove up to Chillicothe, Missouri. I don't know if you guys know where Chillicothe is, up northern Missouri. They were having their Christmas parade. So Casey Wolf was there, Santa Claus was there, and a whole bunch of horses were at that parade. Okay. And all those horses had eaten a whole bunch of fiber the day before the parade, I found out as I was trying to make my way through the parade route. But, but after, um, after I finished the parade, I get in my car, I drive back to Arrowhead Stadium where I was going to practice a stunt that I was going to perform the next day at the Chiefs game. We were going to play the San Diego Chargers, that's now the LA Chargers, and I was going to bungee jump and zip line into the stadium. Now, how that works is we hire a company that comes in and they set up a zip line. That zip line attaches to the lights at the top of the stadium, stretches all the way across the field to the lights on the other side of the stadium, and then they attach a bungee cord to that zip line. Okay, sounds safe, right? Yeah, yeah not, maybe not, but <laughs> I know it's kind of hard to understand. So I'm going to show a real short video. Don't get nervous. This is not me getting hurt, but this will give you a really good idea of what I was doing the day I did get hurt. Now, the best part of this video, at the end, you'll get to see what it looks like 260 feet above the football field at Arrowhead Stadium. So. She was in college to grow that time in handy. Find your way. And here's what it looks like from up top.
I love watching your faces, by the way. So, you know, there's about, about two or three out there just smiling, thinking, man, that looks cool. And everybody else is looking at me thinking, that guy's an idiot, right? So, <laughs> but, so the plan is for me to dress up in my costume. I'm supposed to jump out of the rats at the top of the stadium. That guy was supposed to fire for about 20 feet. The bungee cord is then supposed to catch me, bounce me up, and then I'm going to zip line out over the field like you just watched, okay? This is going to be the greatest mascot entrance ever. Well, unfortunately that day, things didn't exactly go as planned because when I jumped out of the lights because of the slack that was still in the zip line, instead of falling 20 feet, I fell approximately 70 to 75 feet, and I hit the seats in the upper level at Arrowhead Stadium. I hit those seats so hard, knocked two of the seats out of the concrete, okay? So if you ever go up there, if you swing by section 324, row 33, seats 22 and 23, you'll notice those seats are a little bit newer in that section. That was thanks to me, okay? But after I hit I, I still remember my body immediately went into shock. I was just shaking. I just remember trembling, and I, I couldn't stop, and I was really struggling to breathe. And I'll be honest, I was scared. All I wanted to do was get down. Well, unfortunately, if your bungee cord is attached to a zip line, there's no way to get down halfway through the ride, okay? This is kind of like a roller coaster. So you go to the it's the fun to get on a roller coaster. You're not getting off the roller coaster until the ride comes to a stop. Well, the same was true in my case. I jumped out of the lights, I fell, I hit the seats. At that point, the bungee cord decides to pull me back up, and then I start to zip right out over a football field like you just watched. Now, I wish I had time today to share with you all the details and how I can look back on this. And trust me, I have thought about this so many times since it's happened, but the fact that I'm still here, the fact that I get to stand up and I get to share my story with folks uh, makes me extremely grateful, okay? And I'm just going to warn you right now, Sean knows this, sometimes in this life when you are really, really grateful for something like still being alive, you know what happens? Sometimes it makes your eyes water, okay? And that's a good thing because somebody told me if your eyes don't water, your head will swell. Think about that. So... You see, my eyes start to line up, so I don't get a big head like some of the professional players I've worked with. I know you know why it's this, but, but I'm going to make a long story shorter for you, because I know you got other things to do yet today. But I got to do something that was never on my bucket list, okay? I got to ride really fast in the back of an ambulance. They took me straight straight to Center Point Hospital in Independence, and as soon as I got there, there was about six or seven doctors and nurses that were just waiting there, and then... As soon as I get there, I start doing CAT scans and x-rays, and they're checking me out from head to toe and inside out. And here's what they found. They discovered I'd broken seven ribs on my left side. I also collapsed my left lung. Now, I don't know if you've ever collapsed a lung. How they fix that, they give you a chest tube, okay? Don't put those on your bucket list either, okay? Because I still, I still remember this doctor. He looked at me and said, Mr. Mears, just a small little tube we're going to insert into your chest cavity, and you might feel a little bit of pressure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently that guy had never had a chest tube before in his life because I thought, <laughs> I thought he was using a garden hose to shove it through my, my broken ribs. But, but not only had I broken seven ribs and I'd collapsed my left lung, they also discovered I'd shattered my tailbone. I cracked my sacrum. That's the bone that your tailbone attaches to. Got a big gash on the back of my left leg that required stitches. I got several units of blood because I'd lost a lot of blood after I'd hit the seats. But then my worst injury, they discovered I broke in the T12 vertebrae in my back. The next day I had surgery and they gave me these new titanium rods in my back. Okay, and so that's a picture of what my back looked like. They also gave me eight of these right here. I brought one of them with me. Not one of those, one of the, okay, spare. But uh, these are. Uh, and these are the screws that hold my titanium rods in place. Now, if you look at the clothes, it looks like something you could pick up at Home Depot. These are a little more expensive than the ones they carry at Home Depot, I found out. But, but here's what I remember most about that, 
night of November the 23rd of 2013. Here's a picture of what I looked like that night in the hospital. But here's what I remember most. The doctor had come into my hospital room, uh, told me all my injuries, explained I was going to have surgery the next morning. He's walking out of his room. He gets to the door. He turned around and he looked at me. And I'll never forget his words. He said, Mr. Mears, he said, I hope you realize today that you are a very lucky man. He said, if you fell 75 feet, he said, number one, you're lucky to still be alive. And he said, number two, you are very lucky you're not paralyzed right now. And, you know, that night in the hospital bed, I thought a lot about what that doctor said. Okay, thought, thought about my life. You know what I thought a whole lot about? I thought a whole lot about how I was choosing to spend my coin each and every day. And today, I just want to share with you just briefly um, what I consider the three greatest, three of the greatest lessons I've learned since that night in the hospital. And I'm going to take that picture down because if I look at it too long, it makes my eyes water too. But, uh, but um, first thing I just say this, you guys, um, I do not believe I'm lucky to be alive. I do believe I am blessed. You see, uh, in the back of my Bible, I've got a quote that says this. It says, there's no such thing as accidents. They're all just incidents in God's perfect plan for my life. And uh, I do believe that. And, um, you know, it, 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 I, I had a guy tell me one time, there's only one word back in God's vocabulary. That's the word oops. Okay? God was not sitting up in heaven that day going, whoops, boy, I didn't know he was going to fall that far. No. God knew what was going to happen. Okay? Now, does that mean God does not love me because he allowed something painful to happen in my life? That's not what that means at all. You see, I know God loves me. I read it again this morning when I got out of bed. Every morning when I get up and do my devotion, I'm reminded God loves me. I know he loves me, and I know he's got a good plan for my life. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the plans I have for you to plan the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. I know God's got a good plan for my life. And you know what? Now, like I said, that doesn't mean he doesn't love me just because something painful happened in my life. And, you know, one of the things that this, this has kind of taught me is that sometimes God will allow, um, we, we see it as something negative, but in reality, God can use those painful times in your life, those struggles, to uh, teach you some incredibly valuable lessons if you will allow him to do it. And I tell you, well, I tell you three of the lessons he taught me. Number one is this, live every day that you get with character, with purpose and with passion. You know, my good friend Rob Hanley that uh, Sean was talking about, one of my accountability partners, we've been meeting together for a long, long time now, but he, Rob likes to say this, he says, we're all like a jug of milk, we all come with an expiration date. The only difference, our expiration date is not printed on us, okay? For a while, I thought my expiration date was going to be November 23rd, 2013. Well, thankfully, that was not my expiration date. You know what I don't know? I don't know when my expiration date is. You know what I do know? Every day I get between this day right here and that day, whenever that day comes, I want to live this life to the fullest. I want to live it, like I said, with character and purpose and passion. And I challenge you to do the same. I challenge you to take every day that God gives you and use it to be a blessing in someone's life. You guys know this. There are a lot of hurting people in this world that we live in. There's a lot of hurting people right here in the Kansas City community. There's a lot of hurting people right here in your church. You know what? And, you know, Every day you get, we've got the opportunity as men to be difference makers in our world. And, and uh, you know, I tell you, too often we get wrapped up chasing what I call the trinkets of this world. We're so worried about success and this. You know what? We should be focused on the things that are truly important in our lives. And, you know, life's a gift. You know, and when you about lose your life, you realize what a gift you, it is. And every day you get some part. Let me share with you real quick one more quote. It's on my desk at all. I've to read this quote every morning. It's the first thing I do when I get to work. But it says this. It says, this is the beginning of a brand new day. God has given me this day to use as I will. I can waste it or I can use it for good. But what I do on this day is important because I'm exchanging a day of my life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day is going to be gone forever, leaving in its place something that I have traded for it. I want it to be gain and not loss, good and not evil, success and not failure, in order that I shall not regret the price I paid for it. 
You guys, I love that quote because once again, every day, that quote reminds me, today is, another, today is God's gift to me, right? Today I get to choose how I'm going to live my life. I get to decide how I'm going to spend my coin. And this day and every day God gives me, I'm, like I said, I want to live it to the fullest. I want to live it for Christ and being a difference maker with my life. So, but that's the first thing he taught me is live with character, purpose, and passion. Let me, let me tell you another lesson he taught me, and it's something my mom tried to teach me in high school. Unfortunately, like a lot of people, I did not think my mother was real smart when I was in high school. Come find out that woman was a little smarter than I gave her credit for back then. But my mom used to always try to tell me and my brothers that the most important things in life are not things. Most important things in life are relationships. And you know what? My mom's a pretty smart gal because um, as I spent nine days in that hospital bed, listen, not one time, and I mean not once, did I think about how big my house was. Not one time did I think about how nice my car was or whether I had the latest smartphone. Not once did I think about whether I had the latest fashion clothing. As a matter of fact, for nine days, I wore the same outfit, okay? <laughs> and it was not fashionable. It was well ventilated. I was <laughs> If you want one of those gowns, you guys probably heard this. Those hospital gowns, it's kind of like going on the bad health insurance policy. You only think you're fully covered, right? Uh, you're not a trip or that way, but, uh, but you spend nine days in the hospital, you had a lot of time to just sit and think. And it was during those nine days, you guys, I was reminded over and over and over again that the most meaningful things in my life are not my things. It's not my stuff. You know what helped me get through nine days in a hospital and six months of just very painful therapy and rehab, day after day after day? Three things. My faith, my family, my friends. And you think about it, all three of those our relationships, my faith, wish I had more time. That's my relationship with Jesus Christ. It is the most important relationship in my life. You know, God, my, I tell this people all the time. My goal as a Christian man, every morning when I get out of bed, it never changes. Never changes. It is the same every day, and that's just to go out and to love other people. Not judge other people. Man, we're good at doing that. But just to go out every day and love other people. Because can I be honest with you? One of these days when my life story is complete, when people are standing around at my funeral, I could care less if they remember how many years I spent as the mascot for the Kansas City Chiefs. I could care less if they know I made it to the mascot Hall of Fame. You guys didn't even know there was mascot Hall of Fame, did you? Yeah, nobody does. Hey, honestly... I could care less if they know that about Because one of these days when my life story is complete, listen, I do not want to be remembered just for what I did. You know how I want to be remembered? I want to be remembered for who I was, okay? And if the only thing that people ever say about my life, the only thing that's ever written on my tombstone is that I love the Lord and I love people, I'm good with that right there, okay? That is how I hope to be remembered. And I want to say thank you to my friends from Chris Cakes for the extra napkin I got with my pancakes. <laughs> Didn't know that's what I got to use it for. But, uh, but that's my faith. Second is my family, my wife, my kids, my parents, my in-laws. I just had a great family. I was put with that difficult life. And then finally, my friends, friends from my church and my accountability partners and my co-workers and neighbors and just so many great people that supported me, brought me to my house or just stopped by and visited me because they knew I was sitting around bored stiff at home and got all kinds of text messages and letters. I got a lot of cards, too. Um, I want to I show you this one just real quick. This is my all time favorite. I speak in a lot of schools. When I say a lot of schools, I speak at over 100 elementary schools a year. There are a lot of character education programs. And so when all these kids found out that Casey Wolf got hurt, they all start uh, making me call letters and mailing them up to Arrowhead Stadium. I get boxes of these things, okay? I get hundreds and hundreds of these things. This is one of my favorites. Came in this hot pink card from some little girl in Kansas. It says, this says, get well soon, Casey Wolf. Merry Christmas and Happy Thanksgiving. So, <laughs> once again, just shout out to Jay Hawks, do things a little different than by far. Hey, I'm church. So, 
And here's what, here's what the inside of the card says. It says, Hello, Casey Wolf. My name's Marion Jones. You came from the symbol of my school. You probably don't remember, but I'm from Sterling Elementary, and I'm so, so sorry. And you know what? You're so lucky you didn't die. That would have been sad, wouldn't it? <laughs> Merry Christmas. Love, Marion Jones. And so... <laughs> <laughs> Tom, that's what I love about kids. They shoot straight with you, all right? But, so, but, but I tell you, once again, that was just another reminder. My mom's a smart guy. Most important things in this life are not things. Most important things in life are relationships. And gentlemen, as you decide how you're going to spend your coin each day, my challenge to you is you make relationships a priority. Because if you're going through a difficult time, it's your relationships help you get through the difficult times, okay? That was accountability, what we talked about. Uh, and even if you're not going through a difficult time, if you're here this morning and everything's good in your world, and I hope it is, hey, here's what I've discovered. It's my relationships. Number one, my relationship with Jesus Christ, and number two, my relationship with others. That right there is what gives my life meaning, and that's what gives my life purpose. My joy does not come from being a mascot for the Chiefs. If my joy depended on the Chiefs, I'd have been a depressed man after the Patriots game. Yeah, right? Hey. I was disappointed, but guess what? Sun came up again the next day, and God was still good that day, too. And so, but, uh, but you know what? So let me challenge you. Make relationships a priority. And I'm going to share with you one last uh, lesson I learned. And I learned this in, it would have been January 2014. I'm on my way to another physical therapist appointment. So you guys probably been to the physical therapist before? Yeah. You used to call him a physical therapist. If you've been around, you know why. But, uh, on my way to another appointment, feeling sorry for myself, right? You know, I don't know if you guys have ever lived with pain. I still live with pain, and it is no fun, okay? You do not get a vacation from it. Don't worry, you are physically, where you're emotionally. There's a lot of days are discouraging, and then once in a while you get a day, and I tell you, it's just flat out depressing, okay? And this was one of those days. I'm driving to another physical therapist appointment, having a pity party. There's never work, but I tried it. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm listening to the, the Christian radio station. This radio personality comes on, and he said this. He said, every morning you wake up, everybody's got something to complain about, and everybody's got something to be thankful for. He said, whichever one you choose to focus on, it's going to determine your attitude for the day. And I still remember sitting in my car, tears running down my face, and I realized, you know what? God just taught me another valuable lesson. I'd, I learned that, yeah, I guess I could sit here and I could complain that I had seven broken ribs, or I could choose to be thankful, had 17 good ones that weren't broken, right? <laughs> it can always be worse, you know? I realized that, yeah, I guess I could complain about my collapsed left lung that still wasn't back to normal. I wasn't sure what was going on. I couldn't see it, but something wasn't right yet. Or I could be thankful I had two lungs, the other one was working just fine, right? I realized that, yeah, I guess I could sit around and complain about all these new scars on my body, right? thankful as long as I'm a, you know, as long as I keep my pants and shirt on like I'm supposed to, nobody gets to see those scars, right? You know, not a Chippendale or my mascot, right? But, but I'm supposed to say that at church. Sorry, Pastor. But, uh, Yes, that morning I wanted to complain that once again I woke up with all this pain in my back, my tailbone, my ribs. But for the first time since my bungee jump, listen, I stopped that day and I told God thank you for I told him thank you for my pain. And by the way, that's really hard to do, okay? But I did. I thanked him because I realized if I could not feel pain, I'd be dead or I'd be paralyzed. And then I thought about that. Death paralysis pain. Guess what? I got the best one out of the three. You know, Mother Teresa once said this. She said, it's okay to have pain in your life. It's not okay to be one. Love that quote. Okay. <laughs> Guys, that quote reminds me, it's okay if I've still got a pain in my rear. It's not okay for me to be a pain in your rear, right? Yeah. You might have a few pains in your ear in life, I understand. But uh, you know, I still wake up with this pain every morning. I tell people I feel best if I'm active. So if you see me out at a Chiefs game running around in my costume, I feel a whole lot better than if I'm just sitting around with nothing. Because if I just sit around, everything tightens back up, okay? Now, here's the bad thing about sleeping. That's not a lot of activity, okay? That is lying flat on your back for seven or eight hours. And so, I mean, every morning I wake up with this pain, and every morning when I I get ready to get out of bed, I realize, you know what? You get to make a choice again. And by the way, you guys get to make the same choice. But when I get out of bed, I realize I can choose to rise and shine or I can choose to rise and whine. You know what? I don't want to be a whiner. You know why? 
Whiners do not make a positive impact for Jesus Christ in this world. You know, and what's the good book tell us? Matthew 5, 16, I think. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds. Praise your Father who is in heaven. You know what? That's how I want to be remembered. I want to be a man who loves the Lord, who loves people, and who lets his light shine in this world. You know, as I wrap up, um, I think I probably said that 10 minutes ago, but uh, I mean it this time, really. But, uh, but, you know, you've heard me talk out this morning about how your life's like a coin. You get to spend it any way you wish, but you're only going to spend it once. So spend it wisely. That reminds me of one more thing my parents taught me when I was growing up. They'd always tell me that your life is like your finances. You know, you can do one of two things with money. You can spend it or you can invest it. Money you spend, you never see it again. Money you invest, that's wise. That's going to multiply, return to you. You know what? You think about it, every one of us, we do the same thing with our lives. You're going to spend it or you're going to invest it. A life that's just spent selfishly, listen, that's wasted. A life that's invested in helping others, encouraging others, impacting others, you know what? That right there is going to bear fruit for an eternity. And so, so my challenge to you is to take your coin and be an investor, not only with your money, but more importantly, with your lives. Take your coin and invest it by living every day you get with godly character, purpose, and passion. Take your coin and invest it by making relationships a priority. Let it start with your relationship with Christ and carry over into your relationships with others. And if I would take your coin and invest it, learn to live like a shiner, not like a whiner, because I believe we put those things into practice our world's going to be a better place, and, and our light's going to shine even brighter for Christ in our communities and our homes and in our workplaces. So, shall I you one last thing I learned after I got hurt? There's nothing good on daytime television. Don't know, don't know if you guys knew that. I don't, uh, some of you may know that. Right? If, if you're at work, you're not missing any way at home, trust me. Uh, I was going crazy. I would go to my appointment. I'd come home. I spent the first week searching around looking for something to watch. There is nothing, trust me. And so what do you do if you're off work for six months and you don't have anything to do? Well, I wrote this book called Wolves Can't Fly, since I proved that wolves cannot fly. Um, <laughs> This book's all about my career as a tiger and a bird and a wolf and places I've been all over the world, people I've got to meet, just crazy stories. You guys know, mascots have stories. If that's one thing, we, yeah, I've left, I think, five women down the aisle on my wedding, or on my wedding day, and I've been best... I think I've been best man in seven wed seven or eight weddings now. I didn't even know who the groom was. I stood there in a wolf suit with a tuxedo on, okay? Yeah. Well... <laughs> Well, it's fine. I got to check another one off my bucket list. I, I got to be the flower girl. You got, you got to drop petals coming down in a wolf suit. Yeah. You can, if you got the money, I got the time, I tell people, right? And so, but, <laughs> but then it tells all about my story of what happened to me November 23, 2013, all the lessons that God's taught me through that time, and just some of the quotes you've heard me use today. Uh, tell you the reason I, uh, I promote this book, you guys, I don't make a dime off this book right here, okay? All the money we make off this book, we give the missions and ministries around the world, do a lot of work with orphanages, and I'll show you some of the pictures we give money to. This right here is a technical difficulty. Uh, there we go, okay. This is an uh, orphanage in Haiti that we work with. This is one of the greatest trips I've ever taken. Uh, right after I got uh, the doctor saying, okay, you're healthy enough, you can start wearing a costume again, uh, took a trip down to Haiti. And I learned a great lesson there. You know, when I did all my therapy and rehab, I spent all my time at home, basically, right? You spend all your time at home, you know what happens? You live in a really small world. You live in a small world, you know what happens to your problems? Oh, boy, they seem huge, right? They're real big. You go to a place like Haiti, you, you spend a week where there's no hot water, no air conditioning. You sleep under a mosquito night every night. And you know what happens to your world? It gets really big. You live in a big world, and you know what happens to your problems? Puts them in perspective in a hurry. But, uh, but that's one of the places we give money to. That's right here. Some kids we work with in the Philippines, okay? Went up to this little village in the uh, mountains and helped them build a, uh, a well so that they could get clean drinking water in their community. And then we're closer to home. We don't need money to shop with a cop. You've probably heard of this before. We give money to underprivileged kids that want to buy Christmas gifts at Christmas time for their families. And when we did this last fall, it was a whole lot of fun. Thing, 
Kansas City Rescue Mission. It's the homeless shelter in downtown Kansas City. They got a thing called the Toilet Paper Challenge, okay? So I teamed up with this elementary school by, over in Lee Summit. We ended up with over 16,500 rolls of toilet paper. Took them two trucks to get it all down. Well, these are some of the guys from the mission to help them work. Then, yes, they'll be wiping a long time down at the Kansas City Rescue Mission before they get rid of all this toilet paper. So it was, that was awesome. One of the most recent trip this past summer, went to the Dominican Republic where it's a girl's orphanage, and I'll show you uh, my favorite picture from this trip right here, okay, yeah, people ask me why a 52-year-old guy still runs around in a costume for a living, listen, that picture right there says it all, I want my life to make an impact for Jesus Christ in this world, I want to be a difference maker. I want to live a life of influence. You know, I meet a lot of people in this job, as you can imagine. And you meet these same people. It's your workplaces, your schools. But, but so many people in life walk through life, and it's almost like their buckets are empty. You know what I'm talking about? They seem discouraged. They seem almost depressed. They wonder, what, you know, does this life really matter? You know what I think that is? It's because too often in this life, we walk around, and we are passionate. I mean, we are passionate about things that don't really matter. And then we're passive about the things in our lives that should matter. You want to be a difference maker, men? You want to make a difference in your home, your workplace, your church, your community? And here's my challenge to you today, is learn to live your life for the things that truly matter. You know what I like speaking here? Not only are you feeding me pancakes, but you're a lot better behaved than the Chiefs fans that work with here in the studio. You guys probably didn't tailgate in your parking lot before you came in. That might have something to do with it. But, uh, man, I appreciate you all letting me come and share with you today. Um, I have no idea what time it is. Mascots never wear watches because we can't see them anyway. So anybody have any questions they wanted to ask? How about back there? I got saved through the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, I grew up in a church, went to church, went through the motions, ate all the church donuts, said my prayers, you know, did all the, all the stuff I was supposed to do. But you know what? I knew Jesus like I knew Michael Jordan, okay? Read about Michael Jordan, heard about Michael Jordan, saw his picture a lot, but I did not have a relationship with Michael Jordan. That's the same way I was with Jesus Christ. I'd read about him in my Bible, heard about him at church and Sunday school, saw his picture at my house, but I was just going through the motions, you know, and uh, that changed when I went to a Fellowship of Christian Athletes conference back in 1985. Uh, it was a weekend of champions event back in St. Louis, and God got a hold of my life in a big way. I-70, that's right, changed me in a big way, and, uh, and you know, God has got a sense of humor. I don't know if you realize that or not. You know, I, I laugh about this still. When I was in high school, I sat on a bench in baseball, basketball, and football. Okay, I was a three-sport bench warmer. God turned around and gave me a 29-year NFL career. You think about that. Okay? Yeah. I think the average NFL career is, what, two or three years maybe? I'm on 29, and if they keep making out, we pray for next year, it's going to be 30, okay? So, but, uh, so, but yeah, that's how I came to know the Lord. Thank you for asking. So, any other questions? All right. Have right here. Um, with your um, costume, do, is the jersey, um, like, sewed on, or do you have to put it on separate? Let me show you my costume real quick. I brought this thing, so I'm going to show it to you real quick. Um, as you can see, we'll start with this feet. As you can see, the wolf's got big feet. Okay, got about size 23 tennis shoes. This is actually two shoes. It looks like one big shoe, but my foot's not this big, thank goodness. So what we do, we take a pair of my tennis shoes, we put my tennis shoes in the big shoes, glue those to the bottom, and that way I can dance around at games without my shoe or my foot falling off, right? But that's also why my shoe's heavier than yours, because when I go to work each day, I've actually got two shoes on both feet, okay? So that's my, that's my shoes. Um, oh, by the way, you know how mascots tell their left shoe from their right shoe? No. Yeah. We write an L in this one, we write an R in this one. <laughs> that's how you tell your left from your right, you're a mascot. So, so that's his shoes. Here's his body. And I'll show you this. Now, I've got two kinds of bodies. I've got summertime bodies, I've got wintertime bodies. Now, this is actually my summer body. Um, 
My, my winter bodies have fur like this from the top to the bottom. Now, if you look at him, looks like he got shaved, right? This one's made out of mesh. But when I put on his pants and his shirt, it covers this up, and it still looks like I'm furry, okay? But this outfit is much cooler. It's also a lot lighter weight. So this is my favorite suit in June, July, and August. Okay, those are not my favorite months to be a mask. <laughs> you might be wondering why Casey Wool brought his summer jur or brought his summer uh, body in uh, February. It's because my summer body smelled better than my winter body when I left my garage. <laughs> That's the only reason. So now here's Casey's pants. I'll show you this. Sit there, hold that. Oh, here's a, here's my new one. I just got these made about six months ago. Okay, you guys, you're never gonna believe this. I got that fabric on sale. I was on the clearance track. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to measure to get them made because I found out it's hard to run to a store and to pick out a pair of pants that will fit a body shape like that, right? So measured, found out the wolf's got 85-inch hips. And that's what 85-inch hips look like. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's his pants. Here is his Chiefs jersey right there. That name on the back. You guys all Chiefs fans, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got a Cowboys fan back there. Put him on your prayer. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, then, uh, and then here's Casey's head. Now, if you have not figured this out, you guys, I do not look out of these eyes, okay? Those eyes do not work very well. Where I see through is the neck. See through all that fur? That's where I look through, is through the neck. And if you've ever been to a Chiefs game or if you watch the video, sometimes the wolf rides out on his motorcycle or a four-wheeler. If you watch close, when I ride the bike, occasionally you see me scratch the neck. Now, that's not fleas, okay? <laughs> well, that means I'm driving a little too fast, the fur blew over my eye hole, and I cannot see where I'm going. <laughs> tell people, if you ever come to the stadium, you're out in the parking lot, the wolf driving his four-wheeler scratching, that means get out of the way because you're about to get run over. <laughs> yeah. Now, tell you one other thing I've discovered, there's a lot of people who come to our games that don't know I see through the, the neck because once in a while people come up and hug me at the games. They always wrap their arms around me and they go, well, hi, Casey, how are you doing? You're patchy. <laughs> <laughs> but, so yeah, my, my jersey does not attach to my, my, I just put it on like any other shirt. So, good question. So, any other questions? All right. Well, hey, I, uh, I appreciate you all letting me come out and share this Saturday morning with you. Hey, let me pray for you before I go. Don't worry, I don't pray here as long as I talk. <laughs> but yeah, please let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I am... Very, very grateful for the opportunity to come out and get share this morning. And Lord, you know, the, the story you gave me is not the story that I would have picked for myself. Uh, didn't even like my story for a while there. And, uh, but I know that, Lord, you've always got a good plan. And, and your word tells us that all things, and all things mean all things, but all things work together for good of those who love you and are called according to your yes. purpose. And Father, I pray for anybody in this room today who's going through a difficult time. I don't know what that might be, whether it's a loss of a job or a breakup of a relationship or, you know, health issues. I don't know what the, what might be going on, but Lord, you do. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you would, uh, would just help them through these difficult times. Lord, I pray that you would help us to keep our eyes focused on you. And God, my prayer is that you would help us as men not to live selfish lives. God, help our eyes to be fixed on you and to be fixed on other people. And uh, Lord, it's so easy to live a selfish life. And I do not want that for myself. And I pray that uh, these men will truly uh, be sold out, followers of Christ, that we would be bold, that we would be unashamed in our faith, so that one day we can stand before you, Lord, and listen to you say, well done. And uh, Father, I just love you. I thank you so much for your blessings. I, uh, I pray that you would uh, help us as we leave here today to go out to be shiners, not whiners, Lord. Help us to uh, point people to Christ and uh, help them to know that the difference in our lives is Jesus Christ. Lord, I love you so, so much. Thank you so much for this morning that we've had together. I pray this in your precious name.